There are two SQL keywords that are going to be used in combination with each other when you update data in the tables in your database. And those two words are update and set. So you say update and name the table that you want to use. Later on we're going to look at views and you'll see that you can also update in a view. But for now let's just look at tables. Update, the name of the table, set, and then you identify the individual fields that you want to change values in. The name of the field, an equal sign, and then assign the new value to that field. A comma, and then the next field. And you can update as many fields as you want in this table in this one operation. You can also add a WHERE clause that allows you to specify exactly which rows in the table you want to update. Don't forget that WHERE clause. If you went in and just said update TBL product set and so on and forgot to put in the WHERE clause, you'd end up updating every single row in the table. So the default behavior is for your update statement to affect every row and that happens sometimes, believe me. So be sure, include a WHERE statement specifying which rows, in fact, you want to update. In this case, we're just updating the one row that has a product ID of 6. If you want to update multiple rows, really the only thing that changes is the WHERE clause. In this case, our WHERE clause based on a category ID is going to return multiple rows from the table. And so, in this case, our update set combination is going to change the price from what it was to what it was times 1.1. In other words, we're increasing all the prices where category ID equals 2 from whatever they were to 10% more than whatever they were. If you want to update based on information from another table, you can do that. Again, we're going to begin with our update statement. The name of the table we want to update, our set keyword, and then identify the fields that you want to update. If there's any chance of ambiguity, use the table name in addition to the field name. In this case, there is a chance of ambiguity because as you see in the from clause that follows, we're making use not only of the table where we're updating the data, but also another table, TBL product, and they have the same field names in them. So, we're going to set TBL product backs price equal to the price from TBL product, we're going to do this where TBL product backs product ID equals TBL products product ID. Now, does this look familiar to you? You may remember that when we looked at joins, we saw that a similar syntax could be used to join. And in this case, in fact, if we wanted to, rather than using criteria in the WHERE clause saying, product ID in this table equals product ID in this table, we could say from TBL product back inner join TBL product on TBL product back product ID equals TBL product product ID. So joins are perfectly acceptable in an update statement. How about deleting? Again, you want to be careful to include that WHERE clause, otherwise you're going to end up deleting every single row in this table. Delete from the name of the table, TBL product back, where product ID equals 10. This will delete the single row that has a product ID of 10. Multiple rows, just expand your WHERE clause to include all the rows that you want to delete. You want to delete all the rows? Leave out the WHERE clause and just delete from TBL product back. Now there is an alternative. If what you want to do is to delete every single row in a table, you can use this truncate command. Truncate table and then the name of the table. There's an important difference. The truncate command is a non-logged operation. In other words, in one fell swoop, you're basically deleting everything from this table in a single operation. You cannot retrace your steps. When you truncate a table in this way, you create a break in your transaction log. And depending on the recovery model that you're using, you may want to do differential database backup at that point so that you get a fresh start with your transaction log because whatever transaction log you have going, you will not be able to move beyond this point because this is a non-logged 
activity. And that's one of the reasons that people use it. Being non-logged, instead of individually deleting every row in the table, this in one non-logged operation just deletes all those rows at once.